Well, who's ready for the word of God? Yeah. Woo! All right, stay plugged in. Tell your neighbor, say, stay plugged in. Stay plugged in. See, because you're, you're going to find out that, that God visited us, touched us, so he could speak to us, so he could stay with us. How many of you know that, that God didn't create you to be a motel? Y'all didn't hear me. God didn't create you to be a motel. God didn't create you to be a person or a, or a place where people come in and leave. God created you to be a home. Somebody say, God created me to be perfect for him. How many of you believe that? Say, say that one more time until it gets in your spirit. Somebody say, God created me to be perfect for him and guess what and say and if people around me don't see that he does oh y'all hear me God created you to be perfect for him and if people around you don't see it so what he does hallelujah glory to God who's ready for the word amen Come on, turn your Bibles. We're just going to jump in to John chapter 14, verse 18, and let's stay plugged in. Can we do that? Yeah. Stay plugged in. John chapter 14, verse 18. We've been working on this series. Uh, we've been working on this year of, of breaking ground, and I want y'all to get used to this too, because that's what the Holy Spirit said, that, that if you're here to break ground, then you need the breaker to come. Come on, talk to me. If you, want, if you want ground to be broken, well, guess what? The breaker, you're, you're, you're inviting the breaker at any time. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. He'll come in, and, and in order for the ground to be broken, he will come in and break the thing. And we, we've been finding out that in order to break ground, there are two types of ground. Y'all remember? It's the ground that's known and the ground that's unknown. It's the ground, if you remember, it's the, the, the known ground are the things that have been preventing us from allowing God to move like he just moved up in this place. And, and, and I want you to get used to this as you keep pressing and you keep expecting. He's going to keep breaking and he's going to keep moving. And we found out that the other type of ground, and we're going to spend six, six months on this. We've been here six months on, this, on, this, on, the, on the ground that we know. And then we're going to begin to talk about the unknown ground. And y'all, y'all see, I got your t-shirt on. It says, I'm going to be something like nothing. Y'all remember, I've been saying this all, all year, that, that when, when you break ground, when God begins to break ground, that you're going to become something like nothing. What's the last part? Something like nothing, what? Ever what? Ever experienced? Ever what? ever seen or created before. Somebody say, I'm going to become something like nothing ever seen, ever experienced, or ever created before. Some of y'all ain't saying it. You're just, you're just so cool. you just, yeah, yeah, amen, okay. Praise God. But you, you was with me, though, weren't you? I saw you was with me. Sometimes you're too cool. You don't have to say nothing. Just I'm with you, though. And, and, and so, so last week, we started the series called Breaking the Orphan Spirit. And, and, and we're, we're going to begin to learn and get a revelation um, that, that everyone who was born into the, the world, the Bible said you were born in sin and shaped with iniquity. And the orphan spirit, really, it's, it's a name, it's a, a title, it's an understanding that we're giving the fallen condition of man. And we're going to get a greater revelation of it today. But if you look at your notes, because you got homework, amen, you're going to find out that, that our subtitle, what's our subtitle for today? It's called what? What's it called? Do you know what? Do you know what? Do you know where what is? Do you know where home is? How many of you know one of, one of the great singers said a room is still a room? Even if there's no one there. And then he went on and he said there's a difference between a house and a home. You can have a house, but until the person that's supposed to be in there is in there, It'll never be a home. And and we're going to find out today that the fallen condition of mankind, the orphan, causes us to not know where home is. And when we don't know where home is, we have a tendency to wander. Y'all hear me? Someone, let's jump in. John chapter 14, verse 18. Y'all ready? All right, come on, let's read. It says what? 
So what, 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 what did Jesus say in John chapter uh, 14, verse 18? He's actually ministering. He's speaking to his disciples, and he's about to leave, but he, but he wants to let them know something. He says, what? I'll do what? I will what? I will not leave you as what? I will not leave you as what? He said, watch this. And in other words, he's saying, I'm not going to let you stay in this condition. I'm not going to allow you to stay the way you are. He said, I'm not going to leave you as what? I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not going to leave you comfortless because that's how an orphan feels. I'm not going to leave you what? Desolate because that's how an orphan feels. I'm not going to leave you what? Breathe like somebody died because that's how an orphan feels. I'm not going to leave you forlorn and I'm not going to leave you helpless. Why? Because he says what? Because I'm, I'm going to do what, baby? I'm coming back. See, see, how many of you know when, when you know where home is, you always know where your comeback is? Y'all are not hearing me. When, when, when you know where home is, even if you leave, you never leave. Are y'all with me? And so, so he says, guess what? I'm not going to leave you in this condition. I'm not going to leave you in this state because I'm coming back for you. He says, what? In just a little while. And how many of you know that when you know where home is, time is a blessing. When you don't know where home is, time torments. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. When, when, when we operate in this orphan spirit, and like I said, I'm about to be 50, y'all. So, so when, when you operate in this orphan spirit, you know, you look in the mirror like, dog, daggone it. <laughs> but when you know where home is, you realize that, man, that's a blessing that I'm looking at. Is this making sense? He says, watch this. And watch this. He says, for just a little while, what? The, the world's not going to see me anymore. It says, what? But who? But you will see me. Why? Because I live. And watch this. And because I live, what it says is you're going to live also. Amen. Come on, let's jump in. Let's read our introduction. It says, what? We were all born with an orphan heart. Come on. It says, what? It says, watch this. It says, for some of us, our outward experiences have only reinforced our inner orphanness. It says, what, what? But even those who were welcomed, watch this, and raised in a loving family have known the internal pain and deep loneliness that cannot be met in the natural. And this is really important that you understand, I'm not talking about daddy issues. I'm, 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 we're not talking, now watch this, now daddy issues make this issue worse. Y'all with me? If you didn't have a father or, or, or you didn't come from a good family or good home or, 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 you, or you experienced abuse from your parents, well, guess what? Th this just exacerbates it. But we're not talking about this because you could have had the best family. You could have come in the best home. But the Bible says that we were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity. And, and being born in sin and shaped in iniquity has caused your heart to feel orphaned. Does this make sense? And it says, watch this. Let's read. It says, what? But what's going to happen? Today, we're going to continue to expose this lie as we learn how to answer the question. What's the question? Do you know where home is? And how many of you know that? I, I, I love this. And, you know, we, we live in this technological world with our cell phones and, and, and in, every, in every good cell phone. I don't know. Y'all might have a Samsung or a Quasi or something that we can't name. <laughs> But there's only one cell phone or company that's in the Bible. It's the Apple. I'm playing with you. Um, I'm just playing. That might be the mark of the beast. And I don't know. But, but, but how many of you know, in, in all of these phones, they have a navigation system. And, and, and some, of us, some of us feel so secure with them because it, it's true that no matter when you get lost, as long as you got that navigator, you can always push that. Come on, talk to me. What's the, you can always push that home button. And, and whenever, whenever, you know, I tell my mom, my, we'll be driving, you know, and she's looking around and the, the, the streets are looking dark and, 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 you're, and, and she knows I don't know where I'm going. <laughs> However, I'm cool because I know where home is. And if ever I get lost, all I got to do is push the home button and it resets everything and takes me back to the place where I'm secure. Is this making sense? Let's read. It says what? The orphan spirit. We're, we're, we're going to do a review. It says what? The orphan spirit. What? Is when your spirit doesn't feel it belongs or when it's disconnected from the father. Y'all reading with me? Come on, let's read. It says what? The orphan spirit, it doesn't do what? It doesn't allow an individual to be fathered. Why? Due to a deep sense of where? 
of, of outward, mm, of inner rejection, and, and as I said, and as a loss of home. And, and it's so important that we understand uh, that, that the biblical experience of really what the Bible teaches, and we'll see this in a minute, that you were created in the image and the likeness of God. And in the garden, you, know, you, you didn't lose any money. Y'all hear me? You, you didn't lose any status. You lost the father. And when you lost the father, you lost your home. Come on, let's read. It says what? Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. I'm going to show you something. It says what? It says then who? It says then the Lord God. What did he do? He formed man from the dust of the ground. And he watched this. And, and, and I love this because prior to this, uh, they said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness and let them have dominion. And then the conversation went on and it says, and now let us form man. See, see, how many of you know that, that anything uh, that, that God creates, he makes it twice? Amen. And the reason why he makes it twice is because when he makes it the first time, he ensures its victory. Y'all not hear me? See, see, before you were formed, you were made. And when you were made, you were victorious. Y'all not hearing me? And so therefore, whenever anything goes wrong with what was formed, then what was made can take over and bring us back to victory. Does this make sense? And so watch this. And I need you to see this. It says what? It says, then the Lord God, what did he do? He formed man from the dust. Watch this, of the ground. And watch this, because he said, he said, let us make man. And then now what did he do? He breathed into his nostrils. Watch this. What did he breathe? He breathed what he made into what he formed. Amen. Y'all don't hear me? So, so God, he said, let us make man spiritual. And then he said, he formed him from the dust. Y'all hear me, side view? Y'all with me? And then he watched this, and then he breathed what he made into what he formed, and watch this, and it says what? Into his nostrils, the breath of life, and what happened? And man became a living being. Translation, and now man became a home for the Spirit of God. Amen. This making sense? Yes. See, see, this is also one of the reasons why many of us, uh, y'all gonna get mad at me, but I don't care. This is why many of us actually misuse our bodies because you don't know what it is the home of. Can, can, I, can I really mess and make all of y'all mad? I, 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 I shall. Here we go. This is, why, this is why many of us don't understand. Well, how come the Bible said I can't have a tattoo? Look straight. And the only reason why I didn't get a tattoo because I couldn't afford it. I didn't have any money for a tattoo. And I got brands on my body because they were free. But, but why does the Bible say that I can't do that? In, 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 in Leviticus, the Bible says that we're not to put any carvings or markings or, 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 or in, in amplified. It says tattoos on our body. And, and here's why. It says, for I am the Lord. And, and people don't understand. Well, well, what's that mean? Well, because you don't know that the word Lord means I'm the owner. And so what he's saying is, and don't y'all, y'all making these, all, these, all these tattoo people making faces at me. It's all good. Don't make no faces. Just stay teachable. A minute ago, you was on the ground worshiping God. Now you're mad because I'm talking about your tattoos. I, I need you to understand. And he, and he says, don't do this. Don't make any markings. Don't make any gravings. He says, because, he says, matter of fact, says the Lord. And the word, y'all know what the, here at the family church we said all the time, the word Lord means what? Shout, it means owner. And so watch this. Well, why did he, he said, don't, don't grave and don't make any marks on your body because you don't own it. And when you do, you're actually exercising a right I didn't give you. Y'all, y'all hear me? It's all good. I, I didn't know either. But, but, the, but the reason why we do this is because we don't understand that doing that is like putting graffiti on a church. Oh, y'all don't hear me. They, 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 they lock people up for that. Come on, look, look straight. Don't, God has forgiven you because I, I, I feel a, a strong tattoo vibe in here. It's okay. It's all right. But, but you need to know what's wrong with it. And I, and I, I've messed up some of your next tattoo appointments. And this is also why it's addictive. Because after you, after you paint something that was perfect, it ain't good enough. You need another one. You need more. Because you can't cover up perfection and feel perfect. Just making sense. That was tweetable. Somebody needs to put that in a meme or something. 
And so it says what? The little Lord God, he formed it from the ground and he breathed and that's when became a living being, and, and that's when you became the home for the presence of God. It says what? And the Lord God, what did he do? And then he planted a garden toward the east. Of, and he called it Eden. And people don't realize that the word Eden actually means a spot of heaven on earth. Because he created you as the home of the spirit of God. And then he needed, now, now the home needed a home. Y'all hear me? So that the home could feel at home. Y'all with me? Because when a home has a home, it makes everything around like it's home. Is this making sense? And so it says here, and the Lord God planted a garden in the east in the Eden, and it says, read me what? And what did he do? And there he put man, who he what? Who he formed, who he framed, who he constituted. He says, what? And what happened? And out of the ground, the Lord God made what? He made it grow what? How many trees? Every. How many trees? Every. Did he miss any when he said every? No. It says, watch this. Every tree what? Every tree that is what? Pleasant to the sight or to be desired, that's good, that's suitable, that's pleasant for food. It said the tree of life also was in the center of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of the difference between good and evil and blessing and calamity. Somebody say it was all there. All there. How many of you know that when God makes you a home and then gives you a home, you don't need anything else? Are y'all hearing me? And, and you don't realize I'm, 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 I'm talking to the orphan right now. Because we've made so many plans because we feel like and don't realize, we don't know where home is, and we made so many plans to try to substitute for the fact that we don't know where home is. Let's go. It says, watch this. We were what? We were created by the Father. Look at this. To be a home with a good home. Somebody say, I was created by the Father. To be a home with a good home. Come on, here's your tweet. Take a picture of this. It says, here's your post for the day. It says, watch this. People what? People who never become a home will never find a home. Come on, say that out loud. Somebody say, people who what? People who never become a home will never what? Will never find a home. And, and this is important. Let me just help you. Singles, that's why you cannot, y'all know I'm going to say this, you cannot use dating as an evangelistic tool. You know what? Well, I'll just get with her and I'll get her born again. Well, the simple fact that you did that means that you chose her over what he instructed. And, and watch this. And, and until we become the home, everything around us will feel like a motel. How, how many ever went, went to a motel? It, it smelled like somebody else. Come on. Come on. The residue of everybody else was in there. It would, come on, talk to me now. We, we, we preaching. It was cheap. Watch this. And you only had a little bit of time until you got to go. Instead of understanding that, that a home is bought with a price that money can't buy. Are y'all with me? It resembles the person that created it. And the presence of the owner is everywhere. Y'all with me? Come on, let's read. It says this. What? In a real home, what is there? There is what? Come on, underline this. There's warmth. What else is in a real home? Here's your feeling. There's security. Come on, what else? Is, and how many of you know that when you have security, you don't need a gun? I got a gun, but you don't need a gun. How many of you know some people walk around like somebody's going to kill them? I've been to churches. You got, you got, you know, not, 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 you got, you got pastoral care. Now we do got a couple people helping me because I lose my keys and everything. But, but you got folks walking around, and I, and I tell some of pastoral care, hey, look, ain't nobody trying to kill me. Stop getting so close. I got a gun. I'll run and get it if somebody, some stuff go down. But, but how many of you know that, that when you, when you, when you are home, watch this, you are secure to be you. And you're not afraid that somebody's going to take you from you. Is this making sense? And so watch this. It says in a real home, what? there's warmth, there's security. Watch this. There's provision, there's guidance, there's joy, there's peace, and there's abundant life. And some of you are like, oh my gosh, you know, that ain't it at my crib. Well, the moment that you find home, it will be. Because watch this, when you find home, when you walk in your crib, it'll turn into a home. 
Let's read. It says what? What? When we what? When we suffer from an orphan spirit, watch this. Here's your feeling. We do not feel like we have access to these things. And, and, and this is why we spend all of our time really trying to connive, uh, tr- tr- trying to, uh, tr- trying to uh, hook up. Y'all know we've got hook, the hookup spirit. Hookup spirit is an orphan spirit. Did you know that? The, the, uh, yeah, let me find a hookup. Let me find a loophole. Let me find a way around. Let me find a way to get it on discount. And, 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 and really what, it, what that is, is it's the feeling that if I don't do it that way, I won't get it anyway. Is this making sense? And, and so, so watch this. Here, the, the Lord shared this with me in the car. So, so write this down, that, that when this happens, write this down, that three things happen. So, so three things happen when we suffer from an orphan spirit and we don't feel like we have access to these things. Number one, we wander. I'm going to use an analogy of a dog so you don't think I'm talking about you. Anybody know, anybody know dogs? Anybody know a dog? I just got a dog 11 months ago. His name is Keita. And, and, and watch this. When, when a dog is not trained to know where home is, you have to lock it down. But, but watch this. But when a dog knows where home is, you can have the doors open. Come on, talk to me. Come on, come on Pastor Priscilla. In Tango, in Tango Train, you can have the doors open. You, you, you can have the gate unlocked. Watch this. And it won't, what's the word I said? It won't wander. And so, so what wandering means, because y'all are like, well, well, what that got to do with me? I'm coming down your street. <laughs> wandering means that you test the boundaries. You got the whole yard, but you spend all your time at the gate. Wow. Y'all not hear me? You know, you got your dog, chew, chew dog, your, your chew toy, you got a house in the yard, you got, you, you got everything you need, you got your bones, got everything. You got a whole yard, this is what happened in the garden, but you spend all your time at the, at, you're wandering, all your time at the gate looking on the other side, thinking that I don't have enough. Is this making sense? Yeah. So, so what I said, so number one, what do you do? You start wandering. Watch this. Number two, you, you know what you do? You start to stray. See, well, what is straying? Everybody, anybody ever seen a stray dog? Anybody ever seen a stray dog? See, see, a stray dog is a dog that has left the yard. I'm going to talk to you. It, it still acts like it might have had an owner. You know, it might even have its tag on. But it now has gotten outside of the boundaries. And it's beginning to operate outside of how the house rules. Is this making sense? This is what orphans do. Somebody say, but we're not talking about me, we're talking about dogs. Say that. <laughs> and, and then, but what, watch this, and when you spend a lot of time living like that, then, then actually after a while, then the dog just goes ahead and it becomes unfaithful. Y'all not hearing me? In, in other words, if you go up to the dog, especially you go up to a fast, it'll bite you. Because now it doesn't even recognize or feel like that we are connected or in a relationship together. Is this, is this, this making any sense? But I'm not, somebody say he's not talking about you, he's talking about the dogs. All right, come on, let's read. Let's read. Is this what? What happens? We live life, is this what? As if we have nowhere to go and as if we have no home. And so, so I, I, I want to I take my time in ministering this to us because not understanding this is what makes life so hard when God actually made everything available to you. Y'all ready? Is this all right? Is anybody learning anything already? Come on, let's read. Let's go on. It says what? So we, we, we touched on this last week, but we found out last week what? That the first orphan, his name was Lucifer. And, and this is amazing because in the Bible, uh, when you study and you do your history, you find out that before God created humanity, now here's the amazing part, is that, that, God, that, that God always thinks about what he does. And so his intentions are always internal before they're external. So if you're not careful, you'll look at what was created and you'll get everything backwards, if this makes any sense. Like, for example, the angels were were created before us, and sometimes you think they're above us, but no, they were created before us for us. Y'all hear me? (laughs) They, They were created before us for us. The Bible, the Bible actually says, it, 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 I, I say this all the time in Psalm chapter 8 or 6, 8, David says this, when I look at all of your creation, when, when, when I see how you created everything and, and I look at the heavens, it makes me say, what is man that you've made him a little lower 
than the angels. And of course, when we don't study and we don't read, we take that at face value, and that makes us feel like, yeah, because the angels are higher than us. But that word angel was an angel in the English. It was the word Elohim in the Hebrew. And what was really translated, he says, David says, man, when I look at all of your creation, it makes me say, what is man that you made him a little lower than yourself? And that's why the scripture goes on and it says, Jesus says, don't you know that you will one day judge angels? How can you judge something that is above you? You can't. You can only judge something that is beneath you. And the only one that's beneath, the only one that is above you, his name is God. Is this making sense? And and, and so it's important to realize that, that, that Lucifer, he was the first, he was the first orphan. And before he became orphaned, his name Lucifer, and it's amazing, his name, you know, and, and, and how many of you know that, that, that orphan can mess everything up? Did you know that? Because how many of you know one of the greatest godly names in its origin is Lucifer? Any of y'all name your kids Lucifer? Let me give him a good Christian name. I'm going to name him Lucifer. But, but it's the orphan that messed up the name, if this is making sense. Because the word Lucifer actually means what? Son of the morning. How many of you know that when God creates, everything that God creates, he creates it as a son and a daughter. It's actually in its name. And so therefore, in order to not be what you are, you have to choose not to. Is this making sense? And and so so we find out that Lucifer, he was an archangel. Um, Literally, there were three archangels or or, or there were three leader angels uh, in in the kingdom of heaven before we were created. Uh, Lucifer was was the art. So it was Lucifer, it was Michael, and and, uh, who's the last one? And uh, Gabriel. Uh, Gabriel, um, he was actually the, uh, the messenger. And, and actually, uh, I'm going to go side a little bit, but, but it, it's amazing when you, when you study, how many of you know that, that, that God is triune, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, and there, there's Michael. He's the warrior angel. Sounds like God the Father, or like he serves God the Father. And then there's, then there's uh, Gabriel. He is the messenger. Sounds like the Holy Spirit. And then there was Lucifer. He actually was the archangel who was over worship. And how many of you know that you were created to worship God? Oh, y'all not hearing me. Did you know that? There's a reason why Lucifer hates you so much because you were created to be what he chose not to serve. Is this making sense? Uh, we, went deep, we went deep for a minute. Wait, here we go. Come on, let's read it. It says, watch this. Uh, Ezekiel 28, verse, because y'all are deep, so I figured we went deep. Y'all ready? Hey, is this making sense? E- Ezekiel, watch this. Chapter 28, verse 14. And, and we learn when we're understanding about the orphan spirit, the, 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 the Lucifer, his whole desire is to create little versions of himself. All right, let's read. It says, uh, Ezekiel 28, 14 says what? What did God say? He says what? I ordained and I anointed you as what? As the mighty angelic guardian. And here's the amazing part, because how many of you know the influence that God gives his sons and his daughters? The scripture actually teaches in, in, in Revelation that, that after Lucifer fell and Lucifer chose to become the first orphan uh, called Satan, the scripture says that one third of, watch this, of, of a number of angels that can't be numbered fell with him or were influenced by him. How many of you know that the demons that, that, that demonized the planet is because of the orphan? Is this making sense? Let's read. It says what? I ordained and I anointed you what? As the mighty angelic guardian. What? You had it. What did you have? What did you have? What does God give sons and daughters? What are you acting like you don't have? Well, one of the main reasons why we trip and one of the main reasons why we are driven in this life is because you don't realize because of the orphan spirit, because of the fallen condition of mankind, that you are a son, you are a daughter. And if you are a son, if you are a daughter, one of the hallmarks of being a son and a daughter is access. Yeah, you just can't come busting up in the crib any way you want to. You just can't bust up in your mom and dad's room. Hey, daddy. No, don't do that. But only a son and daughter can knock in prayer. Come on, talk to me. Only a son and daughter can knock on the door where God has been waiting for you to to desire his presence 
and he'll come in. Let's read. It says what? I ordained, I anointed you as a mighty angelic guardian. What? You had what? Access to the holy mountain of God, and you walked among the stones of fire. Let's read. He says what? You were, you were what? You were what? He said you were blameless in all that you did. Watch this. From the day you were created. First of all, understand that the devil is not God's brother. Ain't no yin and yang. Y'all hear me? Y'all karate? Y'all got the karate, the yin and the yang? Meaning that dark and light are equal? No, that's a lie. So, so watch this. He says, watch this. He says you were, you were blameless in all that you did from the day that you were what? From the day that you were what? From the day that you were created until the day that evil was found in you. And now this is important because how many of you know that, that God does not, God did create evil, but God does not choose evil. It's in the Bible that God created evil because the devil didn't. Y'all understand? If the devil created evil, then he would be a source. He's not an evil. He's not a, he's not a source of anything. He perverts everything. God created evil the moment he gave you choice. You understand? The, the moment he gave you a will was the day that evil for you was created because to use your will to not choose his will is called evil. How are we doing? I'm feeling real anointed. There's a, there's a, a teaching on me here. Here we go. This is what? You were blameless in all you did from the day you were created until the day that evil was found in you because I didn't put it in you. You chose it for yourself. Let's read it. It says what? It says this spirit is given what? A right to enter a heart that takes ownership over what has been given. So, so, so watch this. This is why we have to be very careful because some of us actually believe that what you have is yours. And, and this is why here at the family church, and I know y'all not going to like it. I don't care. But this is why at the family church, that, that I, I'm not going to beat you over the head with tithing. Not gonna, no, we're going to teach about it. I'm not going to beat you over the head with giving. Because cause guess what? At the end of the day, it's all his. And, 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 and that's one of the series that's coming. We're going to break the spirit of stingy coming up here. You know, I handle that. Breaking the spirit of stingy is next. But, but, but at the end of the day, watch this. There is a curse in taking ownership of something that was never yours. And so when I talk about giving, when I talk about tithing, when I talk about offering, when I talk about not being stingy, I'm just trying to keep you out of the curse, not trying to get in your purse. You know, I'm anointed. I'm going to start rhyming. Let's read it. It says, watch this. It says, watch this. And then through what? And then through pride, then through pride, what happens? We rebel by using what does not belong to them or us for our own glory and our own advancement. This is how orphan gets in. This is what the Lord shared with Lucifer. Wait a second. You know, you, you were beautiful. Uh, you, you, you actually got blinded by your own beauty because you thought that it was coming from you instead of reflecting off of me. This makes I'll show you this in a minute. Come on, let's read. It says what? The orphan spirit is released and activated. When, when what happens? After the loss of home. So watch this. So, so this fallen nature is in us, but it gets activated when we lose our home. Come on, let's read. We'll, we'll find out what happened with Lucifer. It says what? Your what? Your rich commerce. What happened? It led you to violence. And what happened? You sinned. And so how many of you know that, that God's home is so amazing and it is so perfectly created for his children and he has provided in such a way that he's not going to let someone who has chosen to be an orphan to be an orphan in his home. Are you hearing me? See, see, we, we talked about this on, on, uh, on Wednesdays. Uh, a lot of y'all ain't coming, but it's okay. We talked about this on Wednesdays that, that sometimes uh, we actually have personal rejection because we responded incorrectly to divine rejection. Y'all not hearing me? How many of you know that, that, God, that God is not a people pleaser? Y'all hear me? And so God is not afraid to tell you that you're wrong. He, he's not, a, watch this, and that's why I'm not afraid to tell you that you're old, oh, the tennis is going to be, I don't care. <laughs> see, see, because watch this, be, because the deal is, is that if you are not willing to accept what's right or what's wrong, you can't stay in what's right. Is this making sense? Let's read it. it says what? And this is good because some of you need to, need to look at some of the things you got kicked out of. Y'all don't hear me? Because some of you got kicked out of stuff, not because they were wrong, because you was wrong. No, y'all not hearing me. 
And you couldn't stay in what's right if you don't want to get right. Is this all right? Come on. Let's read. And, and also just know that I just flow in the anointing. So if my eyes fall on you, I'm not looking at you. Amen. Because <laughs> I, I did that for him over there because I did that with him. And he, he, got, he got shook. I mean, but you can handle it. I mean, can't you handle it? Yes, man. It says, what's this? It says, your rich commerce led you to violence. And whatever you sin, he says, what? So I banished you in disgrace from the mountain of God. I expelled you, almighty guardian, from your place among the stones of fire. It says, what? Your heart was filled with pride. Why? Because of your beauty. It says, what? Says, you, look at this. It says, because you thought that your beauty was your beauty instead of my reflection. Let's read it. It says what? Your wisdom was corrupted. What? For your love of splendor. Because you thought you were smart and didn't realize that you were wise because of me. Let's read it. It says, watch this. So what happened? So I threw you out. So I threw you to the ground and exposed you to the curious gaze of kings. It says what? You defiled your sanctuaries. How many of you know he's talking about your, the house that I gave you, the home that I gave you? Why does it not still look like what I gave you? Watch this. It says what? So what? So watch this. So I brought the fire out from within you and it consumed you. See, some people don't realize that, that hell, that the real flames are really the fire on the inside of you that's burning because you've been connected, disconnected from all eternity from your source. Is this making sense? I know I'm teaching good. But watch this. It says what? I reduced you to ashes on the ground in the sight of all who was watching. Somebody said that was Lucifer, the first orphan. Watch this. And here we go. Here's, here's you, the second orphan. Y'all ready? Genesis 3, 22. I just want you to learn. It says what? And the Lord God said, what? Behold, the man has become like one of us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to know how to distinguish between good and evil and blessing and cursing. And it's, it's important to read calamity. It's important to understand that, that God, when he created Adam and Eve, he did not create them perfect. He created them innocent. Innocent means I don't know everything and I need you to show me how. Are y'all hearing me? And here's the amazing part. How many of you know when you lose your innocence by receiving the word, you can get it back? Y'all with me? See, see, I don't know about you, but that's why I come here so I can get my innocence back because my eyes got opened when I actually did what I wasn't supposed to do. How many of you know some of us have seen some things we can't unsee? But God says, but I will give you back your, your innocence and change your heart. Is this all right? Let's read. It says what? And now let's what? Let's he put forth his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. In other words, we are saying now that they're no longer innocent, if they eat from the tree of life, they'll stay in this condition forever. How many of you know that God has a plan for the orphan? Somebody say God has a plan for the orphan. Come on, let's read it. Verse 24 says what? So God drove out the man and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden the cherubim and a flaming sword. It says which, which what? Which turned every way to keep and to guard away from the tree of life because the worst thing that could happen to you is if you spend eternity in your present condition without being changed back to who God knew when you were his child and you knew where home was. Does this make sense? Come on, let's read. It says this. Uh, what? Adam and Eve, what? We're not born orphans. I need you to understand this. Adam and Eve were not born orphans. It says what? But they acquired the orphan spirit the moment they left the presence of God and lived outside of the domain. And I really believe that's why the presence of God was so strong here in the sanctuary so God can set your heart back home. And I really believe some of you don't even know, some of you in here weren't saved that got saved in the presence. Now we just got to do is walk you through. See, see, that's how powerful the presence of God is. The presence of God resets you back to his domain and brings you back home again. Please understand, guys, some of you come late to church, and I'm not afraid to correct you. Some of you come late to church just in time to hear the message, and then you wrestle in your seat with the word the whole time. I see. I'm watching you. Well, well, guess what? You can't receive the word until you get in the presence. Are you hearing me? Why? Because he gave you a will. And until you say, God, I want everything that you have for me. Yeah, I, I, I love this song. Dwell here that Jay, that the Lord gave Jay. He says, he says, I want you to move anything out that's out of the way, even if it's me. 
And that's what the presence does. The presence shows you you so the word can deal with you. Is this all right? Y'all learning anything? Come on, let's read. It says what? What? As a result, what happened? They cont- We're talking about Adam and Eve. It says as a result, what did they do? They continued to make what kind of decisions or choices? They made what? They made poor choices. And what kind of decisions did they make? So write this down. So, so write down uh, a, a poor choice. A poor choice is a choice that's made from a sense of need. A poor choice is a choice, because you might say, I don't be making no poor choices. Yes, you do. And the reason why you keep making poor choices is because you make your choices out of a sense of need, not knowing that if you're connected to God, you only have one need. Are you hearing me? Some some of you took the job because you thought you needed money. Some of you got married because you thought you needed to be, no longer be alone. Come on. I need a bicep and a tricep. I need somebody to cook for me. Come on. You, you thought it was a need. You got, you got, that was, a, and guess what? That was a poor choice. I said this in the first service. I said all the time, you know, some of y'all got booed up and got married, and then you got married, and it was like, boo. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I didn't mean to look at you. Amen. I well, I did. <laughs> Well, why? Because because you did it. You actually made a poor choice because you made a choice out of need or your needs and not realizing that when God is my when God is he meets my one need, then I don't need to make a choice out of need. Is this making sense? Think about stuff you did that didn't work. And when you look back at it, you realize, man, I didn't even need that. Come on, talk to me. I didn't even need that. Now, now watch this. When you realize that God can meet your need, that you don't have needs, you have a need, then you'll find out, God, it's okay to want. Oh, I'm going to mess with you. He says, the Lord is my shepherd, and, and I don't even want now. Well, it's okay to want, because watch this. If I don't have a need, then guess what, God? I can ask you for what I want according to your will, not so I can have because you met my need, but now so I can do what you asked me to do. How many know some of us, I need some money so I can do what God asked me to do. Come on, talk to me. I, look, I need some of y'all to join us together so we can do what God asked me to do. But guess what? I don't want your money. I don't need your money, and I don't need you. I know that, that sounds real hard. I do want you, but I don't need you. And so watch this. We make poor choices when we make a choice out of what? Because guess what? Once you get home, need is no longer your problem. How we doing? Is this all right? See, see, watch this. And so it says, so as a result, they continue to make poor choices. Watch this. And then what else did they do? They made blind decisions. And how many know you make blind decisions when you make a decision without the vision of the Father? Oh, come on, talk to me. See, how many of you know, like I said, if you had the foresight to see why this was going to happen, you would not have made the decision to do this. See, the Father begins to give you vision to see the end from the beginning. And so therefore, watch this, you're not making, and some people say, you know, it's just blind faith. Faith ain't blind. Faith can see very well. Y'all hear me? Faith can see very well. Faith can see the unseen. Faith is not blind. You are when you make decisions without God's vision. How are we doing? Is this all right? I'm almost done. Let's read. It says what? The orphan spirit, what? You can't cast it out. That's why I said, how many of you know, how many of you know right here at this altar, the, the orphan spirit got dealt with and we didn't need no buckets for nobody to spit the demon out. Didn't need none. And guess what? You can't cast it out. And guess what? You can't force it out of your system. How many of y'all, some of y'all get stuff in your system? Oh, I got I to gotta test to take them all. I got to force this out. No, look straight. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're probably lying. <laughs> but how many of you know the way that you deal with it? What does it say? You have to heal it out. Are y'all with me? See, see, what happens is, how many of you know, and I said this before, when the room, when there's no vacancy, nobody else can enter. Y'all hear me? See, see, when the orphan knocks, because how many of you know, the voice will knock, you know, once the room is full, then the voices will say, is there any room? But how many of you know, when you know you ain't got no need, and when you know where home is, you said, nah, dog, we're all good, 
you're not getting in here. Does this make sense? Come on, let's read. It says what? Uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 12. I'm going to prove it to you. It says what? In whom what? In whom because what happens of our faith in who? What happens in our faith in him when our faith gets back in him and we come home? Watch this. We dare to have the boldness. Read with me. We dare to have the courage. We dare to have the confidence. We dare to realize I got free access in my daddy's house. I've got unreserved approach to God with freedom without fears. It's making sense. That's why the Bible says, look, you serve a God that's actually been there and done that. He, he says, look, so don't run from me. And I love, I love my sister who had the boldness to say, that's a word for me. She came here and the move took place out of her obedience. And what God is saying, don't run from me. Run to me with boldness, with confidence. I'll give you access because you are my child and you know where home is. Is this making sense? Watch this. Let's read. It says what? Healing can only be found in the Father's house. It says we need to learn to find our way back home. I'm going to give you three keys and let you out of here. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Is this helping anybody? Amen. Come on. Here we go. Watch this. So here are the keys to knowing where home is. Number one, it's in Psalms 8410. It says what? For what? I love this. It says what? For a day in your courts. What is it? Is what? What's that word? For a day in your courts is what? It's what? It's what? It says one day, God. I found out when I met you again that just one day with you is better than a thousand elsewheres. A thousand anywheres. Because I found out where here is. Y'all not hear me? See, God wants you to know that one day here with him is better than a thousand days anywhere else without him. Because watch this. Here is not here in church. Here is here in your home. Here is when I realize that I'm the home, that I am the dwelling place for my daddy. And once I realize that, I realize, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to let nobody take me out of here. And the scriptures say that a day with God is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like a day. How many of you know in one day God can heal everything that happened to you in your life? Are you hearing me? In one, in one day, in one day when you realize, watch this. Here we go. Look at this. Number one. Oh, now the things I can sell you. Come on. Somebody click it. Go to the next slide. It says what? In one day, God, number one, he wants you to recognize that being here with him is so much better than being anywhere else without him. When you realize, God, that you know what? The best thing for me is just to be here. Y'all hear me? And watch this. And anybody that tries to take me out of here has got to get out of here. You know, that, you know, that will save your relationships. That'll save your time. That'll save your heart. When you find out, number one, God, that the best place for me is here and recognize that here is better than anywhere else and anybody that tries to threaten here has got to get out of here. And I realize that once I know that the best place for me is here, then wherever I go, I take here with me. I'm going to talk to me. Wherever I go, I take here with me. Somebody say, wherever I go, I I take here with me. And if they don't want here with them, I ain't going there. there. Mm. Come on now. I'm I'm trying to help you because some of you have been there and you left here. And you lost home. Come on, let's read. Number two, it says what? Psalms 84 says what? What did he say? Then David goes on. He says what? I would rather be. Look at this. See, once you know where here is, you don't even care what they call you there. Oh, y'all didn't hear me. See, some of y'all tripping. I know I've, I've gone to churches. I remember, I remember a church we used to go to, and I, was a, I wasn't even, yeah, I was a young minister, and there's somebody who, who never had the title minister, and they gave him, they gave him the title minister. The one day he got the minister title, and I was, I was in the hallway, and someone said, hi, hi, John. That wasn't his name. I said, hi, John. He said, oh, excuse me. My name is Minister John. <laughs> and he didn't realize he lost all the influence behind the name in that moment because he didn't know what he was because he didn't realize that when you're home, it doesn't matter what they call you. Are you hearing me? 
And he says, what? I'd rather be a doorkeeper. Y'all hear me? I'd rather lose my title, lose my doctrine, lose my fame. Come on, lose my royalties. Y'all not with me? Because some of y'all said, no, I don't know about that. (laughs) See, but when you get home, you realize I'm not going to sell out. And so therefore, I'd rather be a doorkeeper and stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to dwell at ease in the tents of wickedness. And back in those days, the tents was the party place. That was the place to be. You in the place to be if you in a tent. But guess what? If it's going to take me out of my home, I ain't getting in your tent. Oh, y'all hear me. So, so watch this. Here's number two. Number two is this is, is I got to repent from your failed attempts to make a home without him. Come on, talk to me. See, see some of you have, have experienced divorce. Listen to me. Some of you have experienced divorce and you're taking the same guilt from the divorce into your next relationship. No, all God is saying, just repent. Yeah. Repent because what, what nothing wrong with her? Come on, talk to me. What, what nothing even wrong with you? What was wrong is y'all thought y'all could get together and have a home without him. Is this making sense? Come on, let's read. I'm almost done. It says here, Psalms 84, 11. Are y'all getting anything out of this? Is this helping anybody? Come on, it says, read with me. It says what? For what is he? For the Lord, what is he? He's a son, not a S-O-N. He's an S-U-N. A S-U-N is a source. See, see, watch this, when you come back home and, and when you recognize and when, then when you repent, now you can realize all of the missed opportunities haven't been missed. Are y'all here? Come on. I'm, try, I'm trying to help you because the orphan is trying to push you into places and to doing stuff because you thought you missed it. And God said, baby girl, baby boy, just come back home. I'm the source. One of the favorite scriptures, he said, I will restore to you the years that the locusts and the canker worm has eaten from you. And when you come back home, you're going to realize you'll never have to be ashamed again. He says, because watch this, because the Lord God, what is he? He's a son. And how many of you know when you got a source, then you also realize I've got protection. Are you hearing me? He's my source and he's my shield. Let's read. It says what? The Lord bestows present grace. Watch this. And favor. Watch this. And not just glory, but future glory. How many of you know your home has your future in it? Is this all right? It says, watch this. And what's in that future glory? Read me. It's what? There's honor. What's in there? There's splendor. And watch it. There's heavenly bliss. Come on, y'all talk to me. I don't even know what that is. I, I still ain't got the revelation of what that that's how fly and dope that uh, I don't think we'll ever figure that that one out till you get like, oh, this, oh, this is heavenly bliss. <laughs> My feet ain't even touching the ground. Watch this, and, and now read this with me. Guess what? I need you. I need you. We're we, we going to heal the orphan right now. I still got more in, in weeks to come, but we're going to heal this orphan right now. Watch this. It says what? No good thing will be withheld. Come on, talk to me. Oh, see, see, when you come back home, you realize, why did I leave? The whole trick of the devil was to push you out of your home because you thought you were missing something there. Oh, you, you, you thought he was withholding something there. No, but he was saying you were here, but you weren't here. You were here, but you didn't make it home yet. Because when you make it home, you realize what? That no good thing will be withheld from those who walk uprightly, or in other words, who those who come back home. And number three is real easy. Come on, watch this. Read. It says what? Just receive the good things that will never be withheld from you now. Come on, talk to me. Because some of y'all are messing it up right now. Some, some of y'all don't realize that the good thing is next to you. Come on, this is your time to clap. This is your time to get excited. That the good thing is right next to you. The good thing is right around you. The problem is, is you haven't been able to receive it because you thought you were missing something because you lost your way. But God said, just come back home. And I just want you to receive the good things that I will never withhold from you now that you're home again. Did you get anything out of the word of God? Glory to God. 